Alright, so it's about time that I get back into Crash Bandicoot again. So all the reasons I'm supposed to do this video after my Sonic Generations review, and I mean the remake, not the old one I did in 2019. I actually got most of the footage recorded for the video, but then I realized it was getting close to September, and that was Spyro Month. And as old as that one with only two videos that year, I was going to try to do it again, but then my computer wasn't working, so I had to get a new one. But then I decided that I should review the other Jack games, since I said that I would review those games by the time it gets to the 20th anniversary. But no more getting sidetracked, we're going to do this right now. And in case any guys are wondering, this is technically an episode 2 to my Crash Bandicoot on Game Boy Advance video I did back in April of last year. So anyway, roll the intro. So back in April of 2021, I took a look at all the Crash Bandicoot games that were on the Game Boy Advance, and the majority of them were pretty good. I really liked the Huge Adventure and Antrans, and while they're basically just the 2D sections from the PS1 games, I still have fun overall. And even for how basic of a kart racer Crash Nitro Car GBA is, I actually really recommend it. While they're not perfect games, they're still enough to pass the time. But not all of them were good. For example, we had games like Crash Purple and Crash of the Titans GBA, games that range from just boring to downright dreadful. But now we're going from one generation to another to the Nintendo DS. Now these games aren't talking about as much as the games on the Game Boy Advance. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, handheld games aren't talking about as much as the console games in general. So anyway, there's only three games to talk about instead of five. So for those who thought that five games per video was a little tiring, I think you might be able to rest easy here. First we have Crash Moon Bank from 2006, which was published by Sierra Entertainment. We're going to be seeing a lot throughout this video, and I was honestly surprised that this game was developed by Dems, the same people who were responsible for the Sonic Advance trilogy and the Sonic Rush games, and it's honestly kind of sad to see them go from those beauties to this game right here because this game is honestly really rough. After putting in our names, we enter the story mode. We meet a new character of Main Viscount, who's on the hunt for a super big power crystal. So he arranges a challenge to get everyone to find it for him and rewards him with 100 million dollars. And that's honestly all the story we get so far, but it's not that, that big of a deal since Crash never really had any deep plots to begin with. Alright, I know I usually don't talk about graphics first, I just want to say this right now, even by early DS standards, this game looks fucking ugly. I mean, I guess the backgrounds could look kinda nice, but the character models have taken a huge hit. Crash looks like he's having Vietnam flashbacks, Coco looks like Waluigi, Aku Aku looks like a child kidnapper, and somebody in the development team that thought it was a good idea to give Pure a humanoid body. Anyway, this game is, is basically a sequel to the already mixed Crash Bash. This is a party game, but boring. Unlike the aforementioned Crash Bash, which was just a minigame collection, in this game, it's really just a Mario Party clone, but instead, everyone just rolls the dice at once. Each map has a unique objective to work out to, but having the most points is what gets you to win. So if you win the map's goal, that doesn't mean shit unless you have more points. Like, what kind of logic is that? The game doesn't even explain some of the gameplay mechanics like the items you can use. I honestly couldn't finish this game because I just got bored after a while. Each map has different spots that you to land on, like losing the points, gaining points, getting a new item, or just getting fucked over by getting moved over to another map, which is so fun when it happens. The items in this game are used as a handicap or to help out the other players. Then there's the mini games, which are <laughs> fucking awful. A lot of them use the DS stylus because what's a low effort DS game without a shoehorn touch controls? Most of the mini games are just tedious, like slamming this count with a hammer or just Super Monkey Ball and just Titanic. There's this one mechanic where all the characters can just spam the speech bubble all over and over just to distract you, and it does a pretty great job of doing that too. This is also where the boom bang aspect of the game comes in because you can customize it to either say boom or bang in. That's it. This is one of the worst party games I've ever played. Even the game's story has a shit ending too. Everyone finds the final key and then Viscount takes it for himself and then tries to make a wish on the power crystal. But then Crash comes in and wishes a bunch of Wumpa fruit. Overall, it's generally agreed among the Crash community that Crash Boom Bang is the worst game in the series and yeah, I can see why. This game makes Crash Purple look like Breath of the Wild. There's really no real reason to want to play this game outside of pure curiosity, or if you have a YouTube channel to show this game off to a bunch of random people on the internet, and it's all just a preview from all the quality to come from the DS too. Next is Crash of the Titans on DS. I looked at Crash of the Titans on GBA and it was boring as shit. Here the game starts off with a video where it looks like DS catching on fire trying to render it, so this is a pretty good sign. I'll admit that it was pretty funny how they recreated the tile screen from Crash 1 here. So anyway, the story starts off with Aku Aku communicating with Crash in his dreams, telling that Cortex kidnaps him. Crash meets up with him and he takes down his minions, and then Cortex runs away. Crash then gets Aku Aku back and the game starts, and honestly, after how much I hated the, the GBA game, I thought that I would despise the DS game, but honestly, this game is actually pretty solid for the first 30 minutes. 
Yeah, it just kind of evolves into a monotonous beat em up after a while, but it's not as bad as the GBA version. It's not that much fun though, but I mean, I think it's pretty cool that I, how this game is a 3D platformer with beat em up elements. It's just crash running down linear corridors like in the older games. It's pretty impressive how this game managed to do an entirely 3D game. The DS proved that they could pull off 3D graphics, but most developers decided to just go with side scroller games. Well, this game could have easily been a 2D side scroller, they did a fully 3D game, which is pretty cool. I also want to point out the fact that Cortex is the one who's giving you the tutorial. Like he, he's literally getting crash into how to defeat him. Oh brother, not another tutorial. And you're always wondering why his plans are always fail. So this is basically the jacking enemies mechanic, yes this is what it's actually called, from the console and GBA game. But it's time there's a little bit more classic crash. The Titan mechanics are still really prominent, but it's also some elements from the older games, like the box counter being here, which wasn't in the console version or in any other crash game since Wrath of Cortex. There's crystals to find in each level, which most of them are all as easy to miss as they were in Crash 2 or Crash 3, but some of them will go over your head. Bonus levels come back too as an extension of the main levels. There's also Mojo to collect, and you fill up the meter by the end of the level, you, then you get reward with a power gem. Even a crash dance can make a comeback in this game. There's also these maps that you have to collect in every level. So there's a decent amount of things to do here that keep yourself busy. There's also a lot of variety in these levels too. You do mini games like riding a mutant titan, kind of like the polar bear levels in Crash 2 and the tiger levels in Warped. Or you can use Aku Aku to grind on rails. You can even play as Nina Cortex too. In these levels, you turn smaller creatures into mutants at crash fights in his levels, which, which adds a little bit of continuity to the game. There's honestly a surprising amount of care put into this game. For how much I dislike the GBA version of Titans, I can officially say that Crash of the Titans on DS is actually a pretty solid game. If you're someone who absolutely hates the Titans game because they're nothing like the original games, then I can see people getting into this version of the game better since, since they have a little more cra classic Crash than in the console version. But now we'll get to the final game for this video, and that is Crash Mine Over Mutant DS. <laughs> oh, we're off to a great start. Plus, this game is pretty similar to the console version. Cortex makes a virtual reality helmet that's powered by Bad Mojo that transforms anyone who wears it into a violent zombie. And as you can see, the cutscenes look even worse than the first game. Everyone moves like they have something jammed up their asses, and they just loop the same animations over and over again. But you would just think that, okay, well that's just a story, maybe the gameplay would be better. <laughs> While they, they really just went back to a 2D side scroller, they basically just made Titans GBA 2, but even worse. It's pretty much a basic beat em up with a Jack and the Enemies mechanic, but not good. Crashing all the Titans are all 3D models, but the enemies are t enemies and backgrounds are all 2D. It just really clashes together. Crash's jumping animation looks so awkward. It looks like he's slipping on ice every time he jumps, and all the levels look the same. I bet if I showed you a bunch of levels from one area, there's a 99% chance that you won't figure it out. All you do in this game is just move right, and you're pretty much good. Not there's nothing that changes up the gameplay in any unique way. You're just walking right with an occasional gaggle of enemies to fight each time. Oh, by the way, you can spin from the star, which, honestly, it's kind of weird how the DS version of Mind Over Mutant got something right that the console version got wrong. But we can't be positive because there's still one flaw. While Crash can spin from the star, he gets dizzy after spinning out for a while. Yeah, you heard that right. Crash Bandicoot, a character that is known for his spinning, gets dizzy after spinning. I think like if Sonic started throwing up every time he rolled into a ball. There's only four areas in the game with eight levels, and you're basically just doing the same thing over and over again. The game is just a monotonous slog of, of just pressing buttons to win. Crash has costumes that you can change into, but unlike in Crash 4, there's barely any difference with his appearance. Oh look, he has boxing gloves! None of the collectibles have any meaning to them, like in Titans DS. I mean, you do turn your Titans into upgraded versions of themselves, but then you get, but then you can just walk past the enemies and just make a beeline towards the end of the level. Also, if you die at any point of the level, you start the entire level from the beginning. You get checkpoints, but they don't save your progress though. Once you reach the end of the 900 levels in each world, you face off against a boss, which sometimes can be pretty cheap. No, seriously, you see how much damage he did to me in one attack, and some of them are just way too easy to just spam to win. I honestly can't really think of anything else to talk about here. It's just a basic 2D beat em up with bland levels. This game really has nothing going for it. At least with Titans DS, I can see there was an attempt to try and make a decent game here, but with this game, I honestly can't think of a single part of the game that I actually liked. It's just one of the laziest games that I ever played. So that's all the Crash games on, on Nintendo DS, so while most of the GBA games qualities were pretty mixed, majority of the DS games were just bad. Crash had a pretty non-existent life on the DS since none of the games weren't really that good. The only one I can actually recommend is Crash of the Titans, but even then, I doubt that anyone would choose that game over the console game. I honestly don't like the console version. 
So while I can just go ahead and recommend Crash the Huge Adventure, Antrance, and Carnitro Car GBA, I don't think you'll be missing out on anything if you don't play any of these games. And before you ask me, no I'm not going to review the PSP versions of Titans, Mind Over Mute, and Crash Tag Team Racing because they're basically just the same game but on portable. Maybe when I review the console games, but not now. Wow, that's two negative reviews I've done in a row. Well, well I finally got this video done. Sorry that this one was kind of shorter than usual, but, but I didn't really have that much to talk about here. Anyway, for next time, I actually have a special video plan, but no worries, it's still going to be a review, but it's going to be another collab like the Sonic Unleashed review, although I'm not going to spoil who it is though. But that being said, it might take a little bit longer to get this video out compared to a normal one. But anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see y'all next time. Peace.